By the time the body of Roy DeMeo surfaced in the frozen trunk of a maroon Cadillac on a frigid January day in 1983, his legend of brutality had permeated the streets of Brooklyn. Police and residents alike whispered of a ruthless killer, a man who dealt in death with chilling efficiency. But DeMeo's reign of terror wasn't built overnight. It was a meticulously crafted operation, fueled by ambition, fear, and a complete disregard for human life. The butcher's apprentice DeMeo's path to infamy began far from the blood-soaked concrete of Brooklyn back alleys. Born in 1940 in Flatlands, he honed his skills as a butcher's apprentice, a chilling foreshadowing of the dismemberments to come. However, fate dealt him a harsh hand early on. His older brother, a role model, died in the Korean War, and his father succumbed to a heart attack when DeMeo was just 19. These losses left a void, a vulnerability that the tough streets of Brooklyn were quick to exploit. Under the mob's wing flatlands were a breeding ground for future wise guys, where established families like the Gambinos kept a watchful eye for potential recruits. DeMeo, intelligent, street smart, and undeniably tough, fits the mold perfectly. He gravitated towards the flashy mafiosi, their wealth and power starkly contrasting his upbringing. Despite his background of hard-working, upstanding family members, DeMeo craved a different path, a path paved with violence and fear. Early steps in crime. Even as a teenager, DeMeo dipped his toes into the criminal underworld, becoming a loan shark, preying on his cash-strapped peers with exorbitant interest rates. He learned the ropes of car theft, burglaries, and the brutal realities of street-level crime. His ambition didn't go unnoticed. By 1966, whispers of his exploits reached the ears of a rising star within the Gambino family, Anthony Nino Gaggi. A meeting of minds. A powerful and influential man, Nino saw potential in the young DeMio. DeMio, in turn, saw a golden ticket, a chance to ascend the ranks of organized crime. He proved his worth, collecting payments for Nino and venturing into the lucrative world of distributing bootleg porn. Their partnership was mutually beneficial, DeMeo providing Nino with fresh revenue streams and Nino offering DeMeo a glimpse into the world he craved. Building an empire, DeMeo's criminal ventures propelled him to new heights. He built a luxurious home on Long Island, a stark contrast to the Brooklyn streets he knew, his base of operations became Phil's Lounge, a neighborhood bar he eventually acquired through loans to the owner. The bar, renamed the Gemini Lounge, became more than just a hangout. It was the terrifying antechamber to disappearances. The Gemini crew assembles DeMeo wasn't a lone wolf. He meticulously assembled a crew of loyal and ruthless individuals. First came Chris Rosenberg, a drug dealer with connections. Rosenberg, in turn, introduced DeMeo to Anthony Center and Joey Testa, two tough teenagers known as the Gemini Twins, for their inseparable bond. Together, they formed the core of DeMeo's murderous machine. The first bloodshed up until this point, the crew focused on car theft and drugs. That changed when Rosenberg tangled with a small-time auto parts dealer named Andre Katz. A falling out escalated and DeMeo decided Katz had to go. Luring Katz with a woman and ambushing him, they took him to a deserted supermarket. There, in a cold, sterile environment that mirrored DeMeo's butchering past, they murdered Katz. Chris Rosenberg, in a display of rage, stabbed the lifeless body repeatedly. This was the crew's first taste of murder, a chilling baptism into a world of violence with no turning back. The birth of the Gemini Method The cat's murder was a turning point. They had all participated in a gruesome act, forever bound by a deadly secret. DeMio, however, learned a valuable lesson. No body meant no case. From that point forward, unless a public message was necessary, the crew's victims would vanish without a trace. The House of Horrors and the Fall of a Monster 
The Gemini Lounge transformed into a house of horrors. DeMio's crew perfected their disposal method, dubbed the Gemini Method by law enforcement after the twins' notoriety. Victims were lured to the back room, a soundproof chamber dubbed The Hole. Hit targets unknowingly entered a door outside the bar into a flat rented by gang member Joseph Guglielmo, nicknamed Dracula. Dracula's apartment was a slaughterhouse otherwise known as Horror Hotel. Inside, DeMio's murder toolkit included guns, ropes, knives, ice picks, and various accouterments for carving, chopping, and sawing. Victims of the ritual-like Gemini method would first suffer a suppressed gunshot to the head. Then, as former DeMeo associate turned witness, Dominic Montilio testified in court, somebody would wrap a towel around to stop the blood and somebody would stab him in the heart to stop the blood from pumping. The guys, some clad only in underwear to avoid stains, would drag the body to the bathroom, let it bleed out down the shower drain, then put the corpse on a swimming pool liner spread in the living room, cut the body up, place the pieces in plastic bags, and finally in separate cardboard boxes for delivery to Brooklyn's Fountain Avenue dump. In one case, DeMio reportedly inserted a man's severed head into a trash compactor. Arena later testified in federal court about when DeMio and another shooter killed two unsuspecting car ring members inside a dark building in 1979. Roy said, we have to cut them up, Arena said. Then during the dismemberment session of the victims, Roy instructed me and Henry, Borelli, believe it or not, to go and buy some pizza. The crew's brutality wasn't reserved for enemies alone. Anyone deemed a threat, anyone who crossed DeMio, faced the same fate. Gambino associates, rival mobsters, even petty thieves, all met their demise in the Gemini Lounge's back room. Fear became DeMio's currency, his reign of terror so absolute that even whispers of questioning him invited a death sentence. A web of lies and a mounting body count DeMio thrived on paranoia and secrecy. He kept his crew at arm's length, compartmentalizing their activities. Each member only knew what they needed to know, creating a web of lies that mask the true scope of their crimes. This veil of secrecy, however, had its limits. The sheer number of disappearances began to attract unwanted attention. The cracks begin to show. The first domino to fall was a crew member named Patty Testa. Racked with guilt and on the verge of a breakdown, he confessed the crew's activities to a friend, who in turn contacted the FBI. Testa, fearing for his life, eventually backed out, but the seed of doubt had been sown. Law enforcement, armed with this sliver of information, began to dig deeper. A turning point, the disappearance of Butch Bonvantra. Another turning point emerged with the disappearance of a Gambino associate, Butch Bonvantre. This time, De Mayo had overstepped. Bonvantre was well-connected, and his absence triggered a full-scale investigation within the Gambino family. The higher-ups, wary of DeMio's loose ends and escalating violence, secretly greenlit his own elimination. Double crosses and downfall estimates of the crew's body count range from 75 to upwards of 200-plus. They killed for various reasons, contract killings, suspicion that a person may cooperate or be an informant if someone was considered unreliable or a possible weak link. Sometimes it was a personal grudge the victim may have had with one of the crew. Other times the motive was purely financial. Although the crew was heavily associated with murder, they always had an array of schemes they were involved in. From auto theft rings to drug dealing and pornography, to auto body shops and other quasi-legitimate operations, it was while conducting a drug deal that Chris Rosenberg, using the alias Chris DeMio, ripped off and murdered two Cuban drug dealers. Through their contacts in New York, the Cuban drug cartel tracked down Roy DeMio and issued him an ultimatum. If Chris was murdered, the Cubans would agree not to come after DeMio and his family. Distraught by the news, Roy continued to stall for time. However, during this time, Roy killed an innocent teenager whom he had mistaken as a Cuban hitman sent to kill him. The young man had merely been selling vacuums door to door. At this point, Roy was told by Nino in no uncertain terms that he had to take care of Chris before anything else happened. 
With little choice, Roy set a meeting with Chris during which he shot and killed him. End of the line, Roy had finally achieved his dream of becoming a made man. He had been inducted into the Gambino family thanks to his relationship with Nino Gaghi and the huge amounts of cash he brought in for the family. The only problem was, no one wanted to take the contract because DeMeo was well known for killing at least 38 people and he was surrounded by a crew of killers. John Gotti and Jean Gotti passed the contract and so did Frank DeChico as they couldn't get to DeMeo. The only way in was to hand it to one of DeMeo's own crew members. In the time leading up to his death, DeMeo became paranoid and even considered faking his death as he knew his time was coming. He ended up going to a confession before his death and never left the house without carrying a concealed shotgun under his jacket. The Day of His Death The 42-year-old Demia was lured to a garage in Brooklyn that his gang had used. There, he met with his mentor Nino Gaghi, now a Gambino capo. Roy DeMeo barely had his coat off when Gaggi and other crew members pumped scores of bullets into his body, seven of them into his head. But his minions didn't make DeMeo, one of the most psychopathic killers in mob history, disappear. They left his corpse in the trunk of his 1983 Cadillac and parked it at a marina. After members of the yacht club complained enough, cops came and found DeMeo. Mob boss Castellano wouldn't last much longer. He was taken off the board in December 1985 in front of Sparks Steakhouse in Midtown Manhattan, paving the way for the Teflon Don John Gotti. The Roy DeMeo crew is the most violent crew ever prosecuted in federal court, as far as my knowledge, Assistant U.S. Attorney William Mack Jr. said after the sentencing, adding that DeMeo engaged in wholesale murder. Friends recalled he was a devoted family man. Thanks so much for tuning in today, friends. We hope you enjoyed our discussion. If there's anyone special you'd love us to delve into next time, drop their name in the comments below. We're always eager to hear your thoughts, so don't hesitate to share them. And remember, your support means the world to us. So go ahead, give that like button a smash, hit subscribe, and spread the word by sharing this video with your circle. Until we meet again, keep the curiosity alive. With love, the Midnight Society, the Bradford Chronicles.